Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. I'm really lucky to have a huge variety of different types of boas in my collection that I get to work with. Today I wanted to do more of a show and tell style video showing you some of the different types of boas that I've worked with as well as update on boas I haven't shown in any of my more recent videos. So hopefully you guys see something that you like. So I wanted to start off with this long tail longicata boa. This is maybe my favorite long tail that I have in the collection. This is a 2016 female from Ben Russo's bloodline. This beautiful dark animal. She's just really gotten a lot of the dark pigment as she's aged. Look at that speckled belly, just beautiful. Also really love the head markings, the beautiful dark uh, spear and the dark cheek markings. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous animal. This female is maybe six feet long, maybe five and a half. So you can see it's kind of more of a mid-sized boa. And I actually have quite a few of her babies that she produced last year that are still available. So if you're looking to get a very beautiful boa that is relatively simple to keep, there's nothing that I, or really no species I recommend over the, well, the Colombian, of course, and the long tail boa is another one. These are just great animals to work with. And they have a lot to offer both the beginner as well as the more seasoned boa keeper. The long tail boa boa constrictor or boa imperator longicata. Next we have another subspecies of boa. It was formerly a subspecies of boa constrictor and most taxonomists consider it a subspecies of boa imperator and that is boa imperator sabogae, the Pearl Island boa. So this guy is about nine years old and I'd say he's maybe six feet long. My two adult females are a little bit bigger, probably around seven feet. And these guys are one of the most unique types of boas. They're very elongated, much longer and skinnier than most other boas, adapted for life in the trees. They have this really beautiful characteristic elongated head with this flattened snout and these flared nostrils and these really big eyes, which are often gold or orange, so they're quite striking looking. They're a hypomelanistic type of boa with very little dark pigment. And many of them are largely patternless with very few saddles or very weakly defined saddles. Often they have this white patches on the sides, almost like a pied look to them. And then behaviorally, they're also unique. They're the most active type of locality boa. They never sit still. Handling them is more like handling a king snake or other type of colubrid. So a very unique boa. I would say one of the most underrated boas. Not very many keep, people keep these. I guess they have a reputation for being more aggressive. And they can be, but mine are not really aggressive and they've definitely calmed down with handling. So I'd say that they're not uh, innately aggressive at all. But you know, if you wanna take one out, you're gonna have to be a little more alert because it's gonna keep moving and you're not gonna be able to put it down and just chill with it like some other types of boas. But really cool animal. This guy is a proven breeder several times over. Hopefully I've got some more of his babies on the way right now and my big female. So we'll see, you know, but if they're born, they'll probably be one of the first, if not the first litter of the year, maybe sometime around April or so. So fingers crossed on those, but a really cool animal. The, they give birth to small litters of very large babies. Typically the litter size is only about maybe half a dozen to like eight or nine, but the babies are bigger. They're maybe around 20, 22 inches, one of the larger baby boas. So cool form to work with. The, Pearl Island or Sabogay boa, like this one. Next we have a dwarf boa that's become very popular lately, and that's the Tarahumara Mountain Dwarf Boa. This is a 2018 female born here. So she hasn't been bred yet. Probably next year will be her first season, the 2024 breeding season. But she's pretty much full size. She's about four feet long. And these animals were not very popular for a long time. And the last few years, the popularity has just skyrocketed. I had a litter in 2022 and it sold out very, very fast. So hopefully I'll get some more babies in 2023. But they're a great species to work with. They're very mellow and chill. They're not very large, so they don't need enclosures as big. Enjoyable to handle and also beautiful to look at. They've got this beautiful dark coloration, but also lots of pinks and oranges and even some greens and blues. This female is going into shed right now, so she's not quite as colorful. 
Another characteristic they often have are these circles or ovals down their spine in between the saddles, kind of a circle back pattern, but great species to work with. And as I said, I hope to produce more of these this year because I know a lot of you guys want these. The litters aren't really that big. You're looking at maybe eight to 12 babies roughly on average. So hopefully we can get some more of these beautiful tar humaras to those of you who really want them because they're a very rewarding species to work with. Another very rewarding species to work with is this one. This is a Branchia columbia boa imperator. And these guys, as far as I'm concerned, really have it all as far as a pet boa. Uh, they're beautiful to look at. They're very easy to uh, take care of. They're very chill and mellow when you handle them. Great pet qualities. And they don't get too big, typically around six feet or so as an adult. I thought I'd grab my male. Since I have two females, I take them out a lot in my videos. I haven't taken my male out as much, but you know, He's every bit as beautiful as my females. And these are animals from the Rio Bravo bloodline produced by my buddy Michael Beach in Portland, Oregon. And just one of my all time favorite animals. These have really, really grown on me. And uh, you know, I've only had them for a few years since they're 2020 babies. Hopefully I'll breed them in another few years. Definitely would have gotten these sooner had I known how great Barankia boas are. So, Great animal for pretty much anybody in her pediculture to work with. And I'd say that these, um, and many characteristics, are superior to the true red tails for most keepers. So, highly recommended Branchia Columbia locality boa. Another one of my top favorite locality boas is this one, of course, the Argentine boa. And this is actually a relatively young female, believe it or not. She is a 2019 female that I picked up a few years ago. And she's just grown really fast compared to my other Argentines. I'd say she's probably six and a half feet or so. She's trying to get back there. Maybe even seven feet. She's pretty massive. And so this female, we'll see how she does. Maybe even be ready to breed next year. Just have to see. Not quite sure why she's grown so much faster than my other Argentines since she's been on a similar feeding regimen. She's now actually eating extra large rats about every two to three weeks. But just beautiful, beautiful animal. And these guys, I'd say they are one of my top favorites. They're not quite as handleable as many of the other boas. They're not quite as chill. So I'd say that, uh, not that they're not my, still my favorite, but they're not quite as up there as say the Branchia these days, even though they used to be my number one top locality boa. But still, very beautiful animal, the dark colors and the beautiful pattern. And I actually have some paired up this year, hope to produce some babies. Wasn't successful last year, but we'll just have to see if this year brings better luck. Uh, so love these guys. They are very popular these days. They didn't always, they weren't always very popular. And in fact, going back, 15, 20 years ago, no one really seemed to want them. But now they're just up there with the true red tails as far as popularity, the Argentine boa. Of course, I had to include some true red tails in this video, and this is one of my Surinams. This is a 2016 Prometheus bloodline female born here. She had her first litter last year. In fact, she was crossed to another Prometheus bloodline animal and the babies I'm calling double dose Prometheus. It's uh, they have 50% contribution from Prometheus. In other words, genetically, it's equivalent to one of his direct offspring, like this female. And so, beautiful looking animal. Uh, she's got lots of background markings, which is synonymous with this particular line. Peak saddles, long red tail. Uh, very muscular animal. You can see the true red tails, they're not quite as handleable as some of the other boas. Very muscular, you can see how tightly she's holding on. But uh, right now I have some of her babies available uh, from this line. If you're interested in getting in to the project or diversifying your Suriname breeding project. Beautiful looking animal and hope to have more beautiful Surinams in another few months here as the 2023 babies are born. Another true red tail I work with is the Procalpa Peruvian 
to a red tail like this one. This guy was born here in 2020. He's about two and a half years old, developing really nicely. You can see he's getting this beautiful golden brown color, the long red tail, and he's definitely developing his muscles. These Peruvians as adults are one of the most muscular bows, if not the most muscular. They've got this really square body, kind of shaped like a loaf of bread. And you can definitely feel the uh, raw, pure muscle. As adults, these guys are kind of not the easiest to handle. And you know, if you have one bigger than about six feet, you really need two people to handle it because they, they're just really strong and not likely to cause any harm to you, but they're just uh, quite hard to manage because they're so muscular and they're also quite active and not the most laid back or chill type of boa. But I hope to have more babies in 2023. I had a very small litter last year of just four animals, unfortunately. I had a couple litters last year that went south. I haven't been as successful with these Peruvians as with the Surinams, but I'm doing things a little different this year, so hopefully that will improve my luck. But stay tuned for this summer. You hopefully should have some more baby Peruvians on the ground like this one. Next we have a dwarf boa. This is a qual key dwarf boa born here in 2020. And this female is maybe two and a half feet or so, maybe close to three. She's not gonna get too much bigger than this, probably about four and a half to five feet. And this female is a little nippy actually. I usually, you know, take out her brother if I'm gonna show one, but thought I'd give it a shot. I pulled this one back because she's got a really cool jungly looking pattern. I don't know if you can see, but she's got this really cool striped tail. Just a cool looking animal. I like also really like their gray uh, ground color, but they almost have this purplish tint. Some of them like this one and this whitish belly, but just a really cool dwarf locality boa from a small island off the coast of Belize. It's thought that the wild population might be as few as eight animals, believe it or not, because this island is only, I think it's like a quarter of an acre in size. And the future is uncertain because it's been open to uh, development, real estate development. But luckily there is a pretty good group of these animals in captivity that people are working with. And hopefully this uh, dwarf locality boa should be available in the hobby for quite some time to come. One more boa for today's video, another Central American island boa. This is of course a hog island boa from a small island off the coast of Honduras. And this is one of the most popular locality boas going back a few decades. They just have this beautiful hypomelanistic appearance with lots of pinks and oranges and even some greens and blues. This guy was born here in 2019. Um, his father is a pure Sears bloodline animal from Vin Russo, his mother is an unknown bloodline that I got from Ron Greenberg. And I actually like these guys better than my pure Sears bloodline. They're a little bit darker, a little more speckled, but they're also more colorful. Lots of greens and pinks and beautiful colors on these guys. And I, unfortunately, I haven't been able to replicate this pairing. I've only had one litter from this particular cross. My male seems to not be in the mood or you know have the ability to breed the last few years for whatever reason, since I haven't produced any hogs uh, for the last couple of years. Hopefully the uh, spell will be broken this year. Uh, my female might be gravid right now. She's certainly acting gravid. And uh, we'll just have to see. With any luck, I'll get some more of these beautiful hog boas, hog island boas this summer. And I know there's a lot of people have been asking about these. They're, they haven't been the easiest for me to breed. I think, again, because my male, for whatever reason, maybe he's getting a little too old, he's just lost interest. And I only had that one male in breeding trials up till this year. This year I have a holdback male that I'm using, a little older than this one, but hopefully he'll be able to get the job done. Anyway, love these hog island boas. Recommend them for any locality collector and hope to have some babies sometime this summer, so please stay tuned. So that was a look at some of my favorite types of locality boas that I'm lucky to work with. Uh, please comment below, let me know what was your favorite that I showed, and is there a locality that I have that I didn't show that you wish I had shown? Uh, it'd be great if you could share it with the community so we can hear what you have to say. 
as always, thanks for watching and shoot me any questions or comments you have and I'll try my best to answer them. Have a great day and enjoy your boas.